Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Haya Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is July the 16th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, our text this morning is going to be taken out of Genesis chapter 4. So if you have your Bible, open to Genesis chapter 4, and let's begin reading, and we're going to stop right around verse 7. It says, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and his offering he had not respect, and Cain was very wroth. That word wroth there in the Hebrew indicates a burning anger. And because Cain was very wroth, his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, Sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Now there's a couple of things about this text that we certainly can apply to our lives, and I want to take a closer look at. First of all, Cain becomes angry. He becomes jealous, maybe even envious, because the Almighty has accepted and found approval in Abel, his brother's offering, but his offering was not acceptable. God did not approve it. And so because of this, verse 5 tells us that his countenance fell. Now you can be around people and you can tell when they are high on life. And you can be around people and you can tell when they are depressed. Why? Because those who are high on life, their countenance is raised, it's uplifted. But those whose countenance has fallen, their actual face has fallen. They're walking gloom and doom in the flesh. And so that's what's going on here. Yahweh looks upon Cain and says, As I watch you every day and you enjoy every moment of life, something has taken place and you have allowed it to take control over you. And if you don't get a hold of it, it's going to drive you to do things that you normally would not do. Now, we know the end of the story. Cain kills Abel. But the most important aspect of this story is in verse 7. For God the Holy One looks upon Cain and says, If you do well, so you have a choice to make. You can choose to let that anger go. Focus upon your relationship with me and get your focus off of others because the only reason that you're angry, Cain, is you have taken your focus off of me and you have allowed your, your attention to be upon others. And what I mean by this is if we were to take Abel out of the picture and Cain was the only one present and he offered his offering to the Lord and the Lord did not find approval, Cain would most likely seek the Lord Cain would have to repent if there were any undesirable or unrighteous motives. So he would have to examine himself and search his heart and then confess before the Lord and in making things right, give unto the Lord what the Lord requires. But because Abel is in the picture, Cain, who is only angry at himself, if he were to be honest, because Abel had nothing to do with Cain's offering, he has to have someone to blame, and so instead of blaming himself, he blames Abel. Now, if you're true to yourself and you're honest with yourself, this is getting very personal right now because this describes us in great fashion and detail. Oftentimes, when we become angry at others, they're only a source of our anger. 
The person we're truly angry with is ourselves. There is a TV show that comes on each morning when I wake up, I grab a cup of coffee, and I sit down and I watch it, and it's called Parking Wars. And one of the things that's interesting about this is you have these ticket agents that are going throughout these large cities, and they're ticketing people for parking in places that incur violations and sometimes even towing. And it's amazing how every single one of these people always blame the ticket agent. Most of them curse the ticket agent and become very angry with the ticket agent. But the ticket agent is only doing their job. They're enforcing the law. The person knew when they parked there that that was a non-parking spot. It was a violation, whether they were too close to the crosswalk, whether they were in front of a fire hydrant, whether they were in a handicap zone, whether they were blocking a bus. But it's interesting to watch the anger that pours out of them up on someone else when really and truly they can only be angry with themselves because they are the one that made the choice to park there. Why? Because it was closer to the door. They didn't want to walk. They didn't want to park around the block. And that's what we see going on here. Cain is angry with himself, but he takes it out upon his brother. But let's continue to look at verse 7. It says, if you do well, if you make the right choice, if you resign yourself from this anger and you do what I have required you to do, will you not be accepted? Well, of course, the answer is yes. But then notice this. If you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and we could put in there, of your heart. It's waiting and seeking an opportunity to enter into your heart. And if you're not very careful, sin will find a way into your heart and shall rule over you. And so, friend, if you're listening to this in the morning and you're about to enter into your day, sin is crouching and waiting at the door of your heart, seeking every opportunity it can to cause your countenance to be falling that your focus is upon the problems and the things of this world as opposed upon Yahweh and his glory. And if you're not very careful, one small incident can ruin your entire day. You know this to be true. You've experienced before. So have I. And to be quite honest, we don't even have to wait till we get out of the door of the house. It can happen in our very homes. We're making coffee. The TV's on. We're watching the morning news. A commercial comes on, you see something that you want, and you immediately desire it. That, friend, is sin. We're told in 1 John that sin manifests itself in three ways. The lust of the eye, we see things and want things that we don't have, whether they be material possessions or other people, which of course leads to adultery, fornication, and other such evil acts. There's the lust of the flesh, feeding an insatiable desire that lies within us for things that we should not give ourselves to. And then there's the pride of life, thinking too highly of ourselves. And this can come in many forms, many fashions. And if we're not careful, it can even lead to abusing and hurting others. Because we want to be promoted, we want to be exalted, we want to be recognized and so we care very little about the feelings of others. And so friends, I want to caution you today to be on alert because your enemy, the devil, is roaming this earth, seeking whom he may devour. Your victory is in Jesus today, but you must remain in Jesus. You must keep your mind upon the things of Jesus. The moment that you stop doing that, Satan will begin to seek every opportunity to devour you and he will do everything in his power to keep your focus, your attention, your passions on everything as long as they are not upon Jesus and his kingdom. We have seen it so many times in our own lives. We have seen it so many times in Bible stories from Adam, from King David to Peter and the stories of men and women who have lived throughout the ages. So let's be on high alert today, friends. Let's rule our bodies. Let's rule our thoughts. And let's be careful not to allow him entry into our hearts, even in the smallest ways. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so thankful that you spent a few moments with us today. I pray that your journey will be blessed.
and that this story, this warning, this message may find a deep place in your heart to rest, causing you today to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and as you have opportunity to love others as yourself. Now, as he wills, and until tomorrow, friends, I'll see you on the next video.